Welcome back to The Crazy UK for program six of Building a Les Paul Junior, where the craziness never stops. In fact, you'd be crazy not to subscribe. So let's get on with this craziness. This Christmas came with proper weather and unsurprisingly, proper bread making. Well, unsurprising for me anyway. So whilst I'm not making bread, I can quickly whip up something that I can play later on. So let's get this glued up. I'm going to spread this around using my special spreader. Um, finger. This will be the last time, hopefully, this comes out. Yeah, there's a lot of squeeze out. Now, this squeeze out, broken cocktail stick, that works nicely. So now I'm gonna start clamping it. I'm gonna put the radius block on top, and then take this clamp, and then one in the middle. Not too much. I think I've got enough force on there to hold it, but I don't want any more than it's necessary. It may look weird, but uh, that I think is a good uh, clamping job. Well, it's the next morning and I think we can probably just take these off now. That is very exciting. That's so well balanced. Anyway, that's it uh, for 2022. That's all done and this has come out lovely. Well here we are back in the workshop 2023. Um, moving on, I think the best thing to do is to take a good look at the guitar, run your hands over it, find all the lumps and bumps, get some sandpaper and some scrapers out and get this thing nailed, get it locked down into the shape that you want. Um, having a break from a guitar is usually a good idea. If you just keep barreling on, you can lose focus. So stop for a day, go back to it, pick it up, feel it. You'll, you'll get a lot of clarity back in your head about the direction you're heading in. With this guitar, I've decided what I want to do is to put a heel cap on here, just to ease this transition into the body. I think it'll look good uh, and I think it's appropriate. Moving on, we'll also be drilling some holes to put the bridge posts in and we'll be making uh, cavities for the pickup and also the control cavity on the back. So there's plenty to do, so let's crack on. After a little bit of thought, I've um, pretty much settled on a mahogany block. Um, I think it's probably best because my plan for the neck is probably to give it a dark to light fade, maybe, that sort of thing, and I suspect it's going to be quite dark, and this is not going to be terribly visible, this block, um, because it's the same wood as the neck. At the body, I think I'm going to do a really bright colour, so um, I think this should work out fine. So I have my stock cut to size and thickness to about the right thickness. Plonk that on the back of the neck, hold it on with a finger, grab a nice sharp pencil. I've made a very long nib on this and um, yeah, just trace it out.
So this is all shaped up and looking very nice. Um, put that on there, it fits extremely well. I'm gonna put uh, a, maybe a little bevel on this front to ease it in, and I may also have to put a strip of sandpaper on here temporarily so that I can rub it backwards and forwards like this and get it to fit exactly. It's a little trick that we do in the luthier thing. Let's see if that theory works. Yeah. Gluing time. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue onto the piece itself. Check your glue, by the way, because it may have gone off over the winter. So if it's got really, really cold, as it did in this workshop, this glue can actually start to not function the way it should do. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there and uh, spread it out um, with my finger. I've heard people say, oh, but it's got acids in your skin which will destroy the glue. If that were the case, don't use that glue. So, apply it in the right orientation and push it good and hard. Get, get your squeeze out going. Yeah, that's squeezing out nicely. These little clamps are wonderful. They are from uh, a German food shop called Lidl. They have tools and these are the best ones I've ever had. Get those clamps on there. We're clamping again onto the fingerboard, so I'm trying to get these little clamp heads <laughs> in the right place between the frets. I like to see a nice even squeeze out all the way across the seam. That way I know the pressure is uh, going all the way across. Um, I really like to see also that it's pushed down onto the body. I don't want to glue it and then look back and see there's a gap underneath. Through the magic of television, it's now about three hours later, and I can see that that's pretty much stuck. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it's, it's all come up quite nicely. It's quite nicely stuck. So I now need to get in there with a few tools and start shaping that up. I have a confession to make. I'm a secret sander. I uh, quite frequently take a guitar into the house when it's got a little thing like this to do, like shaping this heel, and I'll sit in front of the telly and I'll, uh, I'll sand away just quietly, you know, just doing a little bit of shaping as I go along. I think my wife sometimes notices, but um, my justification is it doesn't make any more mess than filing your nails. Here comes the rain. Welcome to F Philosophy Corner. As you can see, it's quite cold in the workshop. Uh, and when it's cold, you do, things, you do things wrong. Things go wrong, just like that. And um, today was a bad day, let's face it. I mean, uh, my radio mic didn't work. I thought it would be easier to swap to a radio mic. I thought it would be more effective, that the sound quality would be better, but it wasn't. Uh, it, uh, it, it was just more hassle and uh, it failed. And I lost a whole lot of stuff. And you don't really need that when you're building a guitar, and particularly when you're trying to film it, because you can't go back and redo it, because it's done. So, I'm going to go back to these mics, the ones that sit on the cameras, um, and hopefully we won't encounter that problem ever again. Anyway, that's how it goes sometimes. Some days in the workshop are great, some days are not so great. But you mustn't get disheartened, because tomorrow will be a great day. And um, I'm 
sure it will be. So anyway, let's get back to the build. One of the most common questions I've been asked on this build is how are we going to get this bridge on its posts in exactly the right place? And it, the answer is using a very standard technique, which is basically just to measure 24 and 3 quarter inches from the nut down the side of the neck using a long measure like this and then marking off where 24 and 3 quarter inches comes just here. You can draw a little line here and do the same thing on the other side and mark that as well. What we can then do is draw a straight line between those two marks and that is the line that we want our bridge saddles to follow and that is how you find that point. So how do we get the posts in exactly the right place? Quite simply place the bridge so that the pivotal point of the bridge is on that line that we marked and that the uh, bridge is correctly aligned left and right using the projected lines from the neck that we drew place it in the right place. Now we know that this is in the correct place for the bridge. And I've got a drill bit which is exactly seven uh, millimeters, which I know to be the thickness of these posts that hold the bridge. And I'll place those in there. And I can see that that is where that one needs to go. And on this side, when it's pressed up against the blade, it will be there. So I've now made two holes and those holes are exactly the central point of where my post will be. So there they are, the bridge posts in position. Very significant part of guitar build. Um, the bridge obviously will go in there. It's only held in there by the uh, pull of the strings. So we need to put strings on before that will properly work. But we're in a position now where we can say, okay, we're done with that. Let's move on and let's look at that pickup cavity. And then the rain came. And then it froze for days. It's so bitterly cold, uh, I can't even contemplate going into the workshop. So I'm going to have to think of other things to do to keep, uh, keep this project live, keep you guys entertained. So bear with me, I'm sure I'll think of something. Unfortunately, I went out there this morning with a view to carrying on and cutting the uh, uh, channels for the pickups and what have you. But it's just so cold out there, it's just unlivable. I just can't do it. So uh, I had a word with my wife and I asked her if, that, uh, if, if it would be okay if I, I carried on and did some work in the kitchen today. And she said, um, which I took to mean, yes, of course, my darling, you carry on. So let's crack on. So because we can't do a new routing, let's talk hardware. And one key piece of hardware is machine heads. Now I was going to use these really classic Gibson style machine heads on this guitar. I mean, it's a classic style Gibson, so why not? So given that I already have a classic Les Paul Jr., let's put something a bit more modern on. And I've got these chrome, very neat, very nicely engineered, incredibly smooth machine heads. They're solid metal. Um, they've got a very nice smooth action, a single hole fixing, and then a sort of bolt affair that goes through here that just screws up tight and holds it in place. A very nice ergonomic type affair uh, and small, which I think complements the sort of minimalist vintage style design of the Les Paul Jr. You will have already seen the bridge that I've selected. It's a Wilkinson wraparound, very much like the classic uh, Les Paul Jr. bridge, but it has the addition of um, intonation adjustment for the G and the B string. So it's ideal for this sort of um, retro, but slightly progressive design that I'm doing. So I'm happy with that choice. 
The other pieces of hardware I've selected, let's start with this. This is a, a chrome humbucker surround. It's metal, so it's good quality. Um, when you see my choice of pickup, I think you'll understand why I've gone with this. It's a departure from the classic Les Paul Jr., which generally has a, a P90 single coil pickup in it. Mine's going to be slightly different. It's not going to have that. I have a lot of guitars with P90s in it, and I literally don't need any more. As far as knobs are concerned, I've gone with the classics. Um, these are the standard Les Paul Jr. knobs. I think they look great. Um, they're small, they're comfortable, and they go with the aesthetic of the guitar. So I'm sticking with classics on this one. Now this looks pretty pedestrian. It's a simple black um, two-ply uh, truss rod cover, Gibson style bell. Um, I'm not actually going to use this. I'm just going to cut around this. Just going to use it as a template effectively. I'm going to use my own pickguard material, uh, which I will probably have to slim down to two-ply from three-ply something I've done quite a few times, but um, I like a nice matching pit guard and uh, truss rod cover, so I'm going with this. And my final choice is my pickup. This is a lace Alumitone. This is a very unusual pickup. It doesn't work like a normal pickup. It doesn't have like a magnet in the core and 2000 winds of copper wire around it. It doesn't work like that. It's, it's built in a radically different way. Now they do sound different. They sound very full range, quite acoustic. And given I got so many P90s, it'd be lovely to have a guitar with those sort of sonic options, those sort of tonal differences. So that's my choice of pickup. I look forward to hearing what you think about it. Finally, let's talk paint. Now I've selected this. This is a Surf Orange um, Nitrocellulose. I'm going to use it on the body and possibly on the face of the headstock. I love these bold nitrocellulose colours. It's got a real sort of 50s vibe. I think it's really appropriate. I mean, the Les Paul Junior initially had sort of TV yellows and you get black ones and cherry ones. They're, they're quite strident guitars. I hope you like it. I'm sure if you don't like it, I'll hear all about it. I'm not trying to be safe with this guitar. Uh, I'm trying to be bold. I've already got a Les Paul Junior, so why do I need to be safe? I've already got one, so serve orange. Finally, a break in the weather. We're back in the workshop and uh, we're ready to get going again. So the next thing I need to attack is to cut this hole out so we can put this pickup in place. So we're gonna need a router. Now the router I've chosen for this job is the GKF600 Bosch. Uh, I think it's called something else in America. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic router. It's little, uh, it, this is uh, it without its base on, but it's a really, really great router. And I have used much bigger routers and I bought this one a lot later on. And now I don't use my bigger routers very much, not unless I'm doing something really big. Um, this thing is fantastic for almost everything that you need to do in guitar making. So given my experience now, this is the uh, router that I would start off with rather than the bigger ones. So the bit I'm using for this is actually uh, quite a small bit. It's uh, made by Radiant Tools in the UK and it's got three actual cutting faces, which is unusual for this type of uh, device. Um, it's a small one because I want to be able to get into all the corners of the actual template. Normally templates for things like P90s are actually quite straightforward. They're basically a rectangle with rounded corners and the half inch bit is absolutely fine for that. But for this one, I'm just going to go with this slightly smaller one. So this router comes with a whole variety of bases and this one is absolutely fantastic for guitar making. There we go. That's basically it. You've got to remember to lock it as well. It's great because it's just like any other plunge router now. This is just the best router, I think, for this sort of job. As you know, the pickup I'm going to use is this Alumitone. Um, it's sort of humbucker shaped, sort of humbucker sized, but it's very, very lightweight, which is great considering the body of this guitar turned out so heavy for some reason. It's also not terribly deep. Um, I found in my box of tricks uh, a template that I'd made for an Artec uh, wide range uh, P56 pickup. I don't even remember using it, but this actually works out perfectly. I think it's possibly very close to a standard humbucker. So I'll be using this template to cut the cavity in the guitar top. An essential factor in getting this uh, hole cut in the top of the guitar for the pickup is that we have to get this template onto the body of the guitar in exactly the right place. And core to that is re-establishing a center line on the guitar. Now you can do that quite easily by looking down the center of the neck dots that you've got. 
uh, and um, seeing that it tallies up with the seam at the end of the body, which it does in this case. We've also got the gap between the two posts that we've drilled and the marks that we put on here, which are effectively the side extensions of the neck that we drew to establish them. So we've got quite a lot of factors here that we can use to re-establish the center of the body. Failing all that, we can always get the laser out and use that method. So having re-established our center line, we just need to decide where we want this pickup to go in relation to that line. Now, the original body template has the P90 marked on it. And if you're using a P90, that's exactly what you go with. Now, I know this pickup quite well. I know this pickup is really quite bright. So what I want to do is to put my, my uh, pickup template on the body and I'm just going to move it forward about between quarter and a half an inch, about eight millimeters forward. And that is where I'm going to put my pickup because I know it's very bright. Once that's all established, we can then mark it through, put some double-sided tape on the uh, routing template, get the router out and start routing. We've got to get this in exactly the right place. Ugh. that's perfect. The great thing about doing it with a with a template first is you can actually once you get deep enough take the template off and use the, use the edge of the hole that you've got as a template so uh, I think that's how I'm going to continue and then work it down to the right depth which is just over two centimeters. <laughs> Well, that's come out very nice and clean. They don't normally come out as clean as that when I do it. Um, that's really good. Let's give it a quick try. Let's see if that fits. Oh yeah, that's absolutely spot on. I'm very chuffed with that. One well, pickup fitted. In fact, there's only one pickup, so we're done. <laughs> But we're not. We've got that control cavity to cut on the back of the guitar. So we're going to need that body template and off we go again. We're not going to be able to cut that cavity with just the one tool, so we're going to need to swap to a deeper one. I want to get this routed to exactly the right depth. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to go so that it's too thick. So what I'm going to do is actually going to drill the holes through for the pots before I keep going. That way you can actually see how thick it is and feel it in. So I'm just going to drill through the template into a piece of sacrificial wood 
Seems like that's gone through. Let's do the other one. Okay. And there they are. Looking good. Yeah, I can see I'm, I've probably got about a centimetre to go, so I need to keep going. And carry on I did until I was completely frozen. Anyway, please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you soon. Keep building. Thank you.